stand for today's scripture reading. It's John 20, verses 1 through. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciples, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciples set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there, but he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came following him and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple who reached the tomb first also went in and he saw and believed. These are the readings of the Holy Scripture for the people of God. You may be seated. Let us pray. Oh, loving God, on this holiest day of days and most sacred of moments, may we completely come to you with open hearts and open minds and open bodies for all that you would share and fill us with of resurrected spirit so we will truly live faithfully as your disciples. Amen. Rocks. They are a profound image in our faith story. In biblical times, rocks were used as utensils and they were used to build altars. They served as metaphors for God's faithfulness to God's people and God's people stubbornness regarding their faith. The rock is a metaphor used often in the book of Psalms for God. Rocks were also used to memorialize people who had died. The Hebrews have an ancient tradition, and many other cultures do as well, of going to the graves of beloved ones who have died and placing rocks on top to show that the deceased has been honored and remembered and visited. Sometimes rocks in the Bible were used for violent intention. They were used to stone those who were accused of sin. Rocks were also used as a metaphor for times of testing. Today we think of the big rock that Mary encountered when she went to the tomb. And we go back to remember Mary Magdalene and her visit to the tomb. I imagine as she arrived at that tomb and as she was walking towards it, she was wondering about that big rock and how it was going to be removed and how she was going to get in and how she would tend to her beloved teacher, Jesus. How would she do all that was finally necessary for his burial? And when she arrives heavy laden with grief, Tears rolling down her face. In the darkness of dawn, she sees that the stone has been removed and that Jesus is not there. I just imagine the mixture of emotion going on inside of her because she's interested and filled with mystery about Jesus being gone and yet the incredible heartache of him not being there and her inability to do that last final act of love in touching him. So she runs to the disciples and tells them and they come back and they confirm what she has already seen. He is truly gone. Jesus is really dead. We know her grief is profound because what she says to the angels Instead of saying to them, we don't know where he is, she says, I don't know where he is. Instead of saying to the angels, they have taken the Lord, Mary says, they have taken my Lord. 
Her grief is profound and desperate and painful. She hears that someone is there and she turns around and she sees a gardener. Now, all of us who just heard this heard the lesson, we know that that's Jesus. But Mary didn't right away. The risen Christ asked Mary, "Whom are you looking for?" And Mary is so distraught and so anxious and so fretful, she's unable to recognize the risen Christ. She begs the gardener, tell me where to go so I can find Jesus' body. I, I want to touch him one last time. I want to care for his body so he is properly ready for burial. She is grasping as she talks to the gardener for some kind of control. And as I shared with you a couple sermons ago, there is no ability to control in this situation. Mary has to let go. And it is in letting go that she hears her name called. Mary. Mary. And her eyes are open and she responds, Rabboni. And she sees Jesus risen. Oh my gosh, can you imagine how exciting that would be? How delightful to know that everything was not lost, to know that all the love she had experienced and all the lessons she had learned and everything was not for naught. The delight and the joy. So much so she wants to touch him, but he says, no, I must go to God. And he tells her, Mary, go out. Go out and share this news. Share this news that death is not the last word. Share this news that Endings are not just endings. There is new life and there is beginning and there is hope. Mary's visit to the empty tomb with the stone rolled away now becomes not only a story of death, loss, and grief and despair. It becomes a story of possibility, a story of new life, and a story of comfort and healing. There are two sides to this rock as well. This interaction between the risen Christ and Mary reveals to us how important it is to have a safe space. To have a place where we all can wonder and question, where we all can feel deep pain and sadness and grief and despair. A place where we can be confused and anxious and lost. And a place where we can see and believe and journey to wonder and life. The risen Christ does not rush Mary's grief. He doesn't say, you've got to get over it right now. The risen Christ knows it's not well with Mary's soul. And the risen Christ is present with her. The risen Christ speaks her name with love and care. The risen Christ goes with God. And the risen Christ tells her to go and share the hope that has come out of her despair. This rock or stone could have remained a stone of violence and death in Mary's life, but it was transformed on that Easter morning into a foundation of strength and support and faith. Mary's soul that was not well, that was wounded, became well in her action with that stone and with the risen Christ. I truly believe, as Mary, we are called to see the rocks in our lives and the lives of our community which present themselves as obstacles to the flow of God's love and grace. What are those rocks that are embedded deeply inside of us of judgment or of fear that prevent us from letting the flow of love and new life go through and around us? We are to reveal to each other the positive nature of rocks, God's faithfulness by sharing the stories where we have encountered God as Mary encountered God that Easter morning. We are to equip one another with rocks like utensils and tools of study and learning so that we can go out and live in this chaotic world that is broken and hard and harsh. We are to empower each other with the rock of faith so that we will truly be able to journey life's twists and turns as they go up and down. 
we are to provide the foundation for every person who walks in our doors so that they may be able to find meaningful and abundant life as promised in the gift of the resurrected Christ. After worship, I invite you to find your own special rock. We will have rocks for you as you go out and to take the rock and to do whatever is necessary to be able to let the joy of this day, the gifts of this day, of new life and hope to flow freely, unconditionally. So if there's an obstacle, use the rock. Pray for forgiveness, pray for release, pray for letting go. If there is someone you know who is ill or not well, use the rock to symbolize their illness and to pray for transformation and wellness of soul. If there is a need for sturdiness and strength, use the rock to find the strength that God is waiting to give and to fill us all with from the top of our heads to the tips of our toes. Whatever you need that rock to be, may that rock bring new life this day and strength for the journey. Let us do all in our power to be witnesses to the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Amen.